Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachaha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who still were well, who taught me this 100% true. Peace, blessings, and safety to the elect of the nation of Israel scattered throughout the four corners of the planet Earth. All right, pushing this truth, humility, and sincerity as commanded by Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachaha Kodash. And uh, this is another um, live lesson. The title of this lesson is what scriptures say the Jews are black. I put a line through the word black because the question that we always get asked is what scriptures say the Jews are black. So I'm crossing out that word black and I'm putting what scriptures say the Jews are white. What You know, like this, I mean, it's, it's really through the spirit and power. How about you, shot, man? It's too easy. You know, it's too easy to combat these false religions, these false ideologies, these false philosophies, these false ways, as King David said. King David said, uh, let's go there. We'll start there. Psalms. And I'm going to read a couple of scriptures. And I want to know what scriptures say the Jews are white. And this video probably won't make it. This video will probably get taken down. Okay, this is Psalms 119 and verse, let's see, 104. It says, through thy precepts, I get understanding. Through the precepts, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little, okay? That's how we get the understanding. We get the understanding to a verse in Exodus by going to a verse in Deuteronomy, all right? And then we get more understanding on those two verses by going to one in Hebrews. That's how the Bible has to be put together. It says, through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. So we hate these false ways. And it's really comical how people who had a nerve, they'll never question white supremacy. They'll never question what scriptures say that uh, Yahweh Shai's name was Jesus. What scriptures say that uh, Jesus or uh, the Messiah was a, a white boy. They'll never question these things, but then they quick to say, well, what scriptures say that the Jews were black. How do you know that the Jews were? How do you know that they're they're white? How do you know that the people over there are the Israelites when they don't even call themselves Israelites? When they don't even call themselves Jews, they call themselves Jewish. They put the suffix ish on the back of that word because they understand that they are not the original people. Now I had the book um, Nature Knows No Color Lines, and in that book, the author explains how the Jews were so dark that they were mistaken for Ethiopians. So I want to read some scriptures because I want to know how do these scriptures add up to the Jews being white? How do this, these scriptures that I'm about to read add up to the to the Israelites being so-called white? Because no, ain't nobody on this earth white. My screen is white. My, my shirt, mine is the blue, uh, you know, tacky checkers are, are white. You know, the pages on this book is white, but ain't nobody on the planet earth white. So this is Genesis, the 50th chapter. And I'm going to start at verse seven. It says, and Joseph went up to bury his father and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his house and all the elders of the land of Egypt and all the house of Joseph and his brethren. Keep that in mind. So you have Egyptians and you have the house of Joseph, which are Israelites and his brethren, Benjamin, Judah, Levi, Zebulon, Reuben, all the sons of Jacob. It says, and all the house of Joseph and his brethren and his father's house, only their little ones and their flocks and their herds, they left in the land of Goshen. And there went up with him both chariots and horsemen, and it was a very great company. And they came to the threshing floor of a tod, which is beyond Jordan. And there they mourned with a great mourning and a very sore lamentation. And he made a mourning for his father seven days. Who's Joseph's father? Jacob, who's uh, uh, his, his, la his first name, not last name. His name was changed to Israel. Remember the question, the question that's on the table is what scripture say that the Jews were white? It says, verse 11, Genesis 50 and 11. And when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites saw the mourning in the floor of a tod, who was, who was given this morning? All the house of Joseph and his brethren and the Egyptians. 
And when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning in the floor of a tod, they said, this is a very, this is a grievous mourning to the Egyptians. Wherefore, the name of it was called Abel Mizraim, which is beyond Jordan. So they are, the Canaanites are looking at this company of people, this great number of people, and they're bunching them all to be Egyptians. So if the Jews were white, if the house of Joseph was white, then why would the Canaanites bunch them up to all be Egyptians? Well, we know that the Egyptians are dark skinned people. How do we know? Because Moses was able to pass as the son of Pharaoh. Let's go to Exodus. Exodus. Chapter two. Let's read Exodus two. Exodus chapter two and verse five. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river and her maidens walked along by the river side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she opened it, she saw the child and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, excuse me, shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh, not the child's mother, but a, a, a woman of the Hebrews that will be able to nurse the baby. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. So Moses was the son of Pharaoh. Okay, now we're going, are we going to start to say that the Egyptians were white? And yet we know the history of Alexander conquering Egypt and he and for a short period of time you had Caucasian uh pharaohs in there. But these pharaohs here in this time we everybody knows that they were dark dark skinned people. It says Genesis I mean Exodus 2 and 10 and the child grew and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son and she called his name Masha and she said because I drew him out of water which Masha Moses means drawn so now let's go to Exodus 4. What scriptures say the Jews were white, man? I'm tired of getting asked what scriptures say the Israelites was, was so-called black. What scriptures say they was brown? How do you know they were brown? How do you know that we're the people? How do you know that you're the people? How do you know that, that them, them, ish, them ish people, the small hats, the 1948ers, how do you know that they're the people when they don't even, they don't fit no part of biblical prophecy? Other than the part of biblical prophecy that says that the heathen will take our land into their possession. Exodus 4 and 1, and Moses answered and said, but behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, the Lord have not appeared unto thee. And Yahweh said unto him, what is that in thine hand? And he said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And Yahweh said unto Moses, put forth thine hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. And that they may believe that Yahweh Bahashim was shy, power of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob have appeared unto thee. Verse 6 And Yahweh Bahashim was shy said, Furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. Okay. And when he took it out, Behold, his hand was leprous as snow. He took his hand out and it was leprous as snow. What does it mean to be leprous? Let's go to the book of Leviticus 13. Right? The old classic. Let's go to the book of Leviticus chapter 13 and verse 30. Let's see, am I in 13? I'm in 14. Leviticus 13. So Moses put his hand into his bosom, meaning into his, his garment, tunic, you know. He, uh, his, his, uh, his cloak, he put his hand and when he pulled his hand out, it was leprous as snow. This is Leviticus chapter 13 and verse 29. And if a man or a woman have a plague upon her head or the beard, then the priest shall see the plague. And behold, if it be in, the, in sight deeper than the skin and there be in it a yellow thin hair, a yellow thin hair, 
okay? Who has yellow thin hair? So-called Caucasians, white people, Edomites, blondes, okay? This is called leprosy. Now, Caucasians would be considered clean lepers. You have unclean lepers and you have clean lepers. When you're, when you're completely leprous, you are considered a clean leper. It says here, then the priest shall see the plague and behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin and there be in it a yellow thin hair, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a dry scowl, even a leprosy upon the head or beard. So meaning if it be in a sight deeper than the skin, meaning if it, if it reaches, if the leprosy reaches not only from the hair, but all the way to the skin. So Moses, his leprosy was all the way to his skin. Okay. So Exodus 4, back to Exodus 4. Now that we know what it means to be lepers, meaning to have so-called white skin. Okay. Lack of pigmentation, lack of melanin. Exodus 4 and 6. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, put thine hand into thy bosom again. So Moses saw his hand. He said, oh, shit, my hand is white. I look like, you know, I look like Esau. I look like an Edomite. He put it back into his bosom. It said, and when he put it, thine hand into thy bosom again, and he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom, behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. It was made brown again. So what scripture, what scripture says that the Israelites were uh, white, man? What scripture said, what, what scripture, can, what it, not not what scripture says it. What scripture eludes that the to the to the uh, to to the to the uh, idea that they were white? What what scripture even hints at that? No, there's no scripture that hints at that. Now we're reading scriptures that hint at the fact that they were brown skinned dark skinned people, but we're not. I'm not seeing any scriptures that say that the Israelites and nor their descendants were brown skinned people. Let's go to Songs of Solomon. Now they're gonna say that oh this is poetry it's a poetic that was a poetic verse that Solomon wrote that doesn't mean okay you could think what you want but we're gonna continue to teach what the scriptures say because I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you with something this is Songs of Solomon chapter one and verse five I am black but comely oh ye daughters of Jerusalem as the tents of Kadar keep that in mind as the tents of Kadar it says I am black but comely oh ye daughters of Jerusalem as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. When you go to that word Kedar, Kedar, Kedar in the Hebrew, let's go to it. Lord willing, my computer don't freeze because it sometimes freeze when I open up multiple tabs. But let's go to Songs of Solomon. Let's go to chapter one and verse five and let's get that word Kedar in the Hebrew. Let's see. Songs of Solomon, bear with me. 10 seconds. One. It says, I am black, but comely, right? Boom. Boom. See, but see, but a Christian, a Christianity, a Christianity or like I always call them Christianity ears, they'll never do this. They won't. If we ask them what scriptures say that. Yahweh Shah was was a, a white boy. They would never. Okay, well, I'm gonna do a lesson. I'm gonna show you what scriptures they can't because they, they can't. It's not in there. Their religion doctrine is based upon lies, based upon emotions and lies. Now let's go to the. You see the word black is Shah, Shakar. We'll go to that. Let's see what we we'll just see what it says. But the point is in uh, Kadar. It says uh properly dusky, jetty black. Now let's go to the word Kodar. You see, I am black, but comely as the tents of Kwa. You see, Kwa Da Ra, which is the Da and the Ra are together, so it's Kodar. Let's make it bigger for y'all. Kodar. Strong's H, 6938, Kedar, Kedar, which says dark, dark, 
which the word Kodar means dark skinned. It says, uh, yeah, see, Esau playing games. It says Kodar here, dark, but then down here in the Strong's definitions, it says dusky, whatever that means, of the skin. You see, Kodar means dark skinned, of the skin. And, and the tents of Kodar, the Israelites had tents, okay, and those tents were made of goat skin. Okay, and the goat skin was very, very dark. So when Solomon was comparing himself to the tents of Kadar, these were actual tents. Okay, and they were a, a color. When you go to Psalms of Solomon, chapter five and verse eleven, it says, "His head is as the most fine gold; his locks are bushy, and black as a raven." So Solomon had black hair, and he had locks. Now you're gonna have an Israelite pop up say, see, I got dreadlocks. I got dread. See, I told you I could have dreadlocks. Solomon had dreadlocks. It's not talking about dreadlocks, man. When it's when it says locks, it's talking about braids. Because in order for something to be a lock, it has to unlock. Locks are locks. When the scriptures speak on locks, it's talking about braids, okay? And um, you know, I don't the lesson not about that, so I'm not gonna go there. But that's another verse alluding to. Uh, so-called Negro heritage. Cause I don't know no white boys that got locks, man. Uh, they attempt to do it, but they don't even it don't their hair don't even do right. They attempt to braid their hair, but it don't do right. The brother posted numbers twelve. Kadash S O Z, numbers twelve and nine. Let's just go there. This is the book of Numbers, chapter twelve. Dealing with Miriam, who we know Miriam, brown-skinned person, just like every other Israelite on the planet Earth, just like the Heavenly Father, just like his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. Numbers 12 and 9. Uh, yeah, 12 and 9 over here. It says, and the anger of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from, the ta from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow you see so miriam had her skin changed and she became leprous white as snow and aaron looked upon miriam and, and behold she was leprous and aaron said unto moses alas my lord i beseech thee lay not the sin upon us wherein we have done foolishly and wherein we have sinned let her not be as one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed right because the word Esau is Aishashua, which means wasted away he. Okay? Wasted away he. Because their skin is as one that is dead. You ever see a dead body? It, it waxes cold and it loses its color. It becomes white. So this is the appearance or this is the comparison that Moses and Aaron or that Aaron gave, uh, was speaking on, I should say. It says, uh, Exodus, I mean, Numbers 12 and 11. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed. And when he cometh out of his mother's womb, right, because when you come out the womb, you don't, you don't have your full color yet. And Moses cried unto Yahweh, saying, Heal her now, O most high, I beseech thee. All right, it's like it's like you take some out of the oven when it's too soon. That's what that's how the Edomites are, and that's not how the Heavenly Father looks, you know. And this don't this ain't gonna be a long lesson. I just want to prove a point. I just want to ask a question. Why? What scriptures say that the Jews was white? And like I said, I don't, I don't think this lesson will last. This is Daniel chapter seven and verse nine. And I beheld to the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. Who is the Ancient of Days? The Ancient of Days is Yahweh. Okay, you can Google the phrase Ancient of Days right now, and it's going to tell you that the phrase Ancient of Days is another title for the Most High God, the Most High Yahweh. Daniel 7 and 9. I beheld to the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. The hair of the Most High's head is like the pure wool wool okay so what which what what feature i mean i don't understand what 
What Caucasian has that feature of a woolly hair? Show me one. It says, whose garment was white as snow. His garment, meaning his clothing, was white as snow. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like a fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. So the Lord's throne was like a fiery flame. His head was as pure wool. Now let's go to his only begotten son. Daniel chapter 12 and chapter 10 and verse 5. Daniel chapter 10 and verse 5. It says, Then I lift up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of euphaz. His body also was like the burrow, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass. And the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. So the Lord had arms and feet like in color to polish brass. Okay. That's what, that's what the Lord looked like. So which one of these scriptures, show me a scripture where, where it alludes to the Lord being uh, a, a leprous. Where it alludes to the Lord having no pigmentation. Where it alludes to the Lord having blonde hair. Show me a scripture, a brown hair. You know. Stringy hair. Show me, show me a scripture. What scripture says that? But then, see, when we when we go to this, when we prove this, then the, then the new argument will be, well, it don't matter. Color don't matter. It doesn't matter what he looks like. Yeah, we yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, yeah. Maybe he was a uh, Middle Eastern. No, man. What was his nationality? What was his heritage? What was his lineage? Was he of the seed of David or not? So if he was of the seed of David, that means that he was of the seed of the Israelites. Was he of the Hebrews or not? Was he of the tribe of Judah or not? Did he say he was coming to save his people from their sins or not? Hebrews 7 and 14, for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So the Lord came from the tribe of Yahweh, Judah. Let's get one more on the Most High. Revelation chapter 4. Verse two, and, and immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne and he sat and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto emerald. So the most high was said to be described. Let's get let's Google this. Sardine stone. So the most high was described as a sardine, had the appearance of a sardine stone. So you see the appearance of a sardine stone, a brownish reddish color. A brownish reddish color. It says, and he that sat, Revelation 4 and 3, and he that sat was like, now y'all seeing this? Okay, yeah, y'all seeing this. It says, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto emerald. And we read that the hair of the hairs of his head was like pure wool. Was like pure wool. You see? So what scripture can you show me that says that the Israelites was uh was white? Ho -ho white. Brother posted Khadash SOZ Revelation 22:16. And I Yahweh have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. You know what offspring mean? It means sperm. It means sperm. It says, I am the root and offspring of David, the bright and morning star. So Yahweh came from the lineage of the Israelites. Okay. He came from the lineage of the Israelite nation, which we've been reading that the Israelites were brown skinned people, dark brown people. Jeremiah 14 and 2. It says here, Judah mourneth, 
and the gates thereof language the gates represent the leadership we have none besides the prophets they are black unto the ground and the cry of jerusalem is going up now i'm curious to see what word here is for ground okay it says arataza which is the word for earth and you see what does that say they are black unto the ground what's the word there kodar kodar which means dark skinned dark skinned now this this definition gives more it says to mourn be dark which they were in a state of mourning but that doesn't take away from the fact of their appearance was like in color it says a uh, dark colored i.e dark colored to be ashy you telling me you got ashy edomites what you see ashy <laughs> hey edomites they do be ashy because they don't use lotion but you won't be able to tell dark colored you see now we can go to job 30 30 but they'll they'll refute that they'll say oh well uh you know let's let's just go there well it was a famine there was a famine so that's why the scriptures say that they were black so you what white person do you know if they starve and they gonna turn their skin gonna turn black what what come on man job 30 30 my skin is black upon me and my bones are burned with heat so now they'll say well they were they were in famished so therefore the skin was turning black because there was such a lack of food that their skin was turning black it's like the evolution thing oh yeah we came from monkeys so why monkeys ain't turning into people now if we came from monkeys why we still don't see monkeys turning into humans man this is the this is the bs that christianity is founded upon that's why the scripture said that they have made lies their refuge they have inherited let's get that And they don't want to accept the truth. Just accept the truth. And then when they accept the truth, they say the truth don't matter. Well, his color doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what he came to save everyone. Then that just segue into another. The spirit goes somewhere else and cut him on that. Jeremiah 16, 19. Oh, yeah. How will Bahashim Yahweh shine my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction? The Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. You see, that's what that's what's going on right now. When you cleave to the to the to the false way of our Lord, looking like a white boy, and and and, and for what, man? What's so hard about the truth? What's so what's so grievous about the truth, man? Let's get one more real quick. Let's go to John seven what's so grievous about the truth man so if a christian could answer this vocab malone ricky gantz uh 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 anybody ari vernon creflo holla what's the dude named david uh david guzik you got the other dude who was uh at the watchman camp i, I don't know his, i forget his name if any of you christians can answer this question what scriptures say that the jews was white John 7 38 he that believeth on me as the scripture have said what's so hard about that man what's so hard about believing on him as the scripture have said man you'll go on social media right now and you'll see a nigga posting a picture of white Jesus talking about Lord give me through my struggles it's 2021 but you'll see our people still worshiping Cesar Bogia John 7 38, he that believed on me, and really this is an extension from the lesson that I did last night about he 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 went out to deceive the nations. And so I was I was I was meditating on the on I was listening to the lesson I did last night, and and, it, and the question came to my mind because our people love to and really it, it was really inspired by a sincere brother who asked we did a camp a couple weeks ago, and the brother that commented on the video and he said, What scripture was that that said that the Jews was black? I, I couldn't hear it. So I was just answering his question. I told him, you know, I, I don't even know what scripture was pulled, but I said Jeremiah 14 and 2 and many others, which he wasn't scoffing or nothing. But that that question, it, 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 it resonated in my mind because I'm like, that's the question that scoffers always ask us. But what scripture say that they was white? 
which you know what I'm saying. So now we we want to hear a response from you. We want to know what scripture do you have to prove that you are the people. John 7 38, he that believeth on me, as the scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, meaning wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Okay. But first, you have to believe on the Lord, as the scripture have said. That's the way that you're going to obtain this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding by believing on Yahweh Shah, as the scripture have said. Revelation 1 and 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Who is the Son of Man? Yahweh Shai. Clothed with the garment down to the foot, not down to the waist. Down to the foot. He was clothed with a garment down to the foot, not a t-shirt with fringes. Okay. I don't know if that go over people's head. They like to read that verse, but that, that part seemed to go over their head. Clothed with the garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. And his head and his hairs were white like wool, white in color, woolly in texture. It's not hard. Who who who's who has features like this? It says his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. So the Lord's feet was like fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. Woolly hair. What the hell? That <laughs> I don't know what what's going on here. I guess they got some type of ailment. Now Esau is gonna play games. None of these people have woolly hair. Maybe this chick right here. Look, watch this. The Lord compares people to sheep. Okay. So this is woolly hair. When the scriptures talk about wool, it means the wool in comparison to a sheep. White like wool, like this. Now, if a, if a, if a, if a Jake. If they if a Jake call themselves growing dreads and they don't wash their shit and they just let it do what it do, this is what it's gonna turn into. It's gonna look like this. Which you ain't supposed to do that. Locks, dreadlocks are unclean. If you want to have some locks, get some braids. But this is what Jake hair will come to look like a, a, a sheep. So this is what the Lord is referring to when he talks about woolly hair, white like wool, as white as snow. So what 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 scripture can you go to that says that the Israelites was white? I'm gonna close because I ain't like I said. It's 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 pretty simple. Uh, we can go to Acts twenty one though. Acts twenty one real quick. Acts twenty one and thirty eight. Art thou not that Egyptian? So let's go up 36 for the multitude of the people followed after crying away with him. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, may I speak unto thee who said, canst thou speak Greek? So the chief captain asked the apostle Paul, can you speak Greek? Why did he ask him? Can he speak Greek? Because he didn't look like Alexander the Great. He didn't look like your typical Grecian. But that doesn't necessarily mean that he was a brown skinned person. But let's go to verse 38. The chief captain goes on to say, Art not thou that Egyptian which before these days made an uproar? So he, he thought Paul was an Egyptian. The same way that Joseph and his brethren were mistaken for Egyptians in Genesis, the 50th chapter. The apostle Paul was mistaken for an Egyptian that caused an uproar. It says, and let us out into the wilderness 4,000 men that were murderers. But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew. Of Tarsus, a city in Sicilia, a citizen of no mean city, and I beseech thee to suffer, I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. So Paul made it clear: look, I'm not an Egyptian, I may be dark skinned, but I'm not I'm not that Egyptian that you're thinking about. Okay, I'm a Jew. 
because the Jews were what? Black unto the ground, dark skinned people. Okay. The Lord said he formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And that verse, Genesis 2 and 7, that verse doesn't feature the name Adam in it. But when you go to the word ground in the Hebrew, it's Adam, which is Adam. So that was the verse. That was when Adam was created. Okay. Because people get confused on that. But Adam was created in Genesis 2 and 7, which that was basically a recap of what was done uh, in the first chapter. The scriptures do things like that. Like, if, if, for example, also in Genesis 11, uh, it, it's a recap of Genesis 10, if I'm not mistaken. Let me go to that real quick. Yeah, because Genesis 10, because I was reading, I'm like, damn, this is not in chronological order. When you go to Genesis 10, it gives you the generations of Noah. You know, and all of the generations beyond Nimrod, but then Genesis 11 is dealing with the period of Nimrod when he when he built the city of Babylon, and you know things like that. Well, that's why it's still good to read the scriptures in in, in you know uh, in order, you know, at times as well as in order to understand doctrine, you have to have precept upon precept. But the question is there. The question is there. Any any Christianity there can answer what scripture says that the Israelites were were uh, so-called white people, okay? Stop asking us what scriptures say they was black. Start answering that question. What scriptures say that they was white? What scriptures say that our Lord name started with a J? What scripture can prove that? All right, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying to a member of the elect. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, or Ha Kodash for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. And again, Lord, when this lesson was edifying to a member of the elect out there, Kwame Yashirala, Brother Yaquam, Kwame Yashirala, Shalom.